Hey, it's Mr. Veve, and today's lesson is on ecological succession. So let's get into our first key concept here. Communities change in predictable ways following a disturbance. So we're going to look at two types of succession here. So let's look at our first, primary succession. That is a succession that occurs in a bare ecosystem. So it's something that starts on exposed rocks. There's no soil, no vegetation whatsoever, usually following something like a volcanic eruption or some sort of receding glacier. So you can see in the picture here, we have exposed rocks on the far left, and throughout time, we get some small herbs and shrubs and everything all the way up to some trees at the very end. So starting in a bare ecosystem, that would be primary succession. So let's look at a couple of examples here. You go from picture A on the left all the way through picture D on the right. Picture A is an example of where you start with primary succession, that is on bare rock. Uh, pretty soon when you get to picture B, you have some pioneer species, so the first species that get there, those are usually things like lichen uh, and a little bit of soil. After that, when you move to picture C, you get a little bit of grass and some small plants you can see. And then by picture D, we have what we call the climax community. And that is the, uh, the, the most diverse community that you're going to have for this particular type. So you get some trees and shrubs there with that primary succession. So let's move to secondary succession and talk about what we see here. So this is succession in an existing ecosystem. What I really want to draw your attention to here is what's in green. It says soil remains. So in secondary succession, we have the old soil left over from something that happened before. So maybe we had a fire or a flood or there was some harvesting, you know, trees cut down or there was some sort of disease. But the old soil remains and the new ecosystem is built upon the old soil not bare rock this time. So let's look at A through D here of a secondary succession. So looking at picture A, you have some soil and some weeds, not very much going on, but pretty soon you have some tree seedlings and some other plants. Pretty soon that graduates into a pine forest and then you have a mixed forest, which would be your climax community here in secondary succession. So a couple of examples we're gonna look at here. This is an example of a pond, uh, so some sort of aquatic ecosystem. Um, in, in a succession. So you look on the picture A on the top left and you see a little pond, you see some fish, a duck, frog, um, and you see the amount of sediment that you have. And pretty soon some of that sediment gives way to uh, some plant life and then the sediment gets greater and the pond is covered up and then the pond reforms. So we have like a little uh, succession that we see uh, in this pond. Something a little closer here is in an ocean. So a piece of wood, driftwood at the bottom of the ocean. Um, and after a couple months down there, you've only got like an initial colonization of some, some bivalve species or some bacteria that are opportunistic uh, getting in there. But what happens is in the three to six month period is they give way uh, to some more um, uh, detritivore type uh, organisms and, and polychaetes like that. Uh, but pretty soon uh, you have, uh, after about 6 to 12 months, you have a whole bunch of respiration that has taken place by these organisms from the 3 to 6 month period, and you're getting things like uh, sulfitic niches um, and, and other uh, sulfate reducing bacteria that contribute to the rest of the ecosystem. So there's an example of succession at the ocean floor.